There were a number of instant films throughout the history of film photography, but there was only one that became so ubiquitous that it became the generic term for the entire industry. The Polaroid Corporation was and continues to be a legendary name in the world of film photography. It's played a pioneering role in the development of photographic technology for over eight decades. It appears they're back to take back their crown from Instax and once again become the king of instant film photography. This video is gonna be a discussion of Polaroid from their inception, following them all the way to the recent announcement of their newest cameras. Edwin Herbert Land was a brilliant American scientist and inventor who in 1926 dropped out of Harvard University to pursue his vision of creating a polarizing material. Land's big breakthrough came in 1929 when he invented the world's first practical polarizing material. Many of us photographers know, love, and are well familiar with the effects that a polarizing material can give. It cuts down glare, it allows you to see into the top of water, cuts the glare off the top of the water. A polarizer has an almost magical quality to it. It was this invention that attracted interest from other folks in the photography space and really set the stage for Land's future innovations. In 1929, Land founded Land Wheelwright Laboratories in New York City, and he was able to do this because of the financial support of his former Harvard physics instructor, George Wheelwright III. As you might have been able to have guessed at this point, the lab focused on the research and the development of polarizing materials. Within a year of the formation of the company, Land had invented a polarizing film that was able to be used in glasses, camera lenses, and other optical devices to cut down on glare and the other optical effects we talked about. Land had received a patent for this polarizing material, which he called Polaroid. And as one might expect, it being the first practical polarizing material, this material was sought after by many industries, including eyewear, optics, and those sorts of things. In 1937, Land officially founded the Polaroid Corporation in Cambridge, Massachusetts. His goal with the Polaroid Corporation was to explore new applications for the Polaroid material. Land's company started manufacturing sunglasses and other optical products, and eventually found some success in these endeavors. The most iconic and revolutionary invention usually associated with Polaroid is their invention of instant film photography. And anybody even a little bit familiar with Polaroid's history will recall a conversation that Land allegedly had with his daughter. After taking some photographs, Land's daughter was curious as to why she couldn't see her images immediately after they were taken. And that was what sparked Land's interest in creating instant photographs. After years of research and development, the world's first practical instant film camera would be brought to market in 1948. It was called the Polaroid Land Camera. The Polaroid Land Camera was a game changer in photography at the time. The camera used self-developing film. Users would take the camera, take it out, take some shots, and then watch the images develop in real time right before their eyes. This allowed the users to experience that wonderful sense of instant gratification and the wide world of instant photography was born. And it didn't take long after that for Polaroid cameras to become a cultural phenomenon. What was so special about Polaroid's film was it contained all the development chemicals inside the film. And the way that this would work is after a user had taken a photo, the user would press down a lever, which would cause the film to slide through some rollers, which would squeeze the chemicals into the film, distribute them evenly, and allow the image to then be developed. And it should come as no surprise that these cameras were known for their ease of use. It eliminated the need for external dark rooms, development, all this other stuff that usually came along with photography at the time. And it was that immediacy, that instant gratification that made these cameras so appealing to amateurs and casual users. And as I said previously, the Polaroid land camera then became a cultural phenomenon. Folks all around the world would know that iconic square format, the one that persists with us even to today through things like Instagram. Almost every family photo album from that era has Polaroid stuck in it somewhere. And after the Polaroid land camera, Polaroid would continue to innovate, announcing new cameras and integrating new features and technology as time would go on. Eventually, Polaroid would release their iconic SX70 camera and the widely used 600 series. It was those innovations and these cameras that cemented Polaroid's legacy in photographic history. But it wouldn't be all smooth sailing though for Polaroid. Much like every other photography company that existed from 1990 to 2000, let's say, Polaroid wasn't unaffected by the onset of digital photography, which ultimately led to Polaroid's first bankruptcy in 2001. Polaroid's first bankruptcy was primarily the result of a combination of factors, including changing consumer preferences and the advent of digital photography. It's important to note though, the company had been facing financial struggles for many years leading up to the bankruptcy. In October of 2001, Polaroid officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And I won't go all lawyerly here, but Chapter 11 bankruptcy is restructuring. It's not liquidation. So that's how the company was able to sell off some assets and continue to exist after the bankruptcy. That's the main feature of Chapter 11 bankruptcy. It allows a company to continue operating and trying to do business while they're under bankruptcy protection, while they try to turn their business around. And Polaroid made some pretty drastic changes as a result of that 2001 bankruptcy. Like I said previously, they sold a bunch of their assets. There was lots 
of changes in management, and they made a conscious effort to try to integrate more digital photography-focused devices. Polaroid eventually came out of bankruptcy in 2002. The problem for Polaroid, though, was that the market wasn't finished changing, and Polaroid still continued to struggle to adapt and find its footing, which led to, unfortunately, a second bankruptcy in 2008. By 2008, film photography was a thing of the past and hadn't quite fully began its resurgence yet, and the world had almost completely moved to digital cameras. And once again, this was a Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Polaroid entered into bankruptcy protection and continued to do business as they tried to sort things out. And unfortunately for Polaroid, the difficulties were even more significant this time than the first go around. And eventually, Polaroid was sold to PLR IP Holdings LLC, and this was an entity controlled by the private equity firm Patriarch Partners. And this sale involved the full transfer of all of Polaroid's intellectual property and assets. And much like we've seen many other businesses do after bankruptcies and after their, their entire business model and, and strategy has had to change, Polaroid then became largely a licensing company. Instead of manufacturing cameras, lenses, film, those kinds of things, the new owners were primarily focused on licensing the Polaroid name and extracting capital from the goodwill associated with that name. And fortunately, after the second bankruptcy, Polaroid emerged as a leaner, more efficient company. We can't really tell the story of modern Polaroid without talking about the Impossible Project. The Impossible Project was founded in 2008 after Polaroid announced in February of that year that it would stop producing film for Polaroid cameras. The founders of the Impossible Project were Florian Capps, Andre Bozeman, and Marwan Saba. In June of 2008, Capps and Bozeman met at the Polaroid factory's closing event and decided to found a company to produce materials for Polaroid cameras. In October of 2008, Impossible bought the production machinery from Polaroid for $3.1 million and leased a building called the Building Nord, which was formerly a part of the Polaroid plant in Enschede, Netherlands. The company has offices in Vienna, Berlin, New York, in Tokyo. At least the Polaroid production plant and developed new instant film products for use in some existing Polaroid cameras, beginning mass production and sales in 2010. They generated $270,000 in profit and $4 million in revenue and sold approximately 500,000 units. In January of 2008, the company announced that it and Polaroid would launch a range of collectible products called the Polaroid Classic range that originates from different periods of Polaroid's history. In July of 2013, Florian Capps announced his retirement from the company and Creed Hanelon took over role as CEO. In December of 2014, the Impossible Project announced that Oscar would be their new CEO. Creed O'Hanelon would become the executive chairman of Impossible's management board. And that leads us to May of 2017, when Impossible's largest shareholder acquired the brand and the intellectual property of the original Polaroid Corporation. Impossible Project was renamed Polaroid Originals in September of 2017. In March of 2020, the company rebranding again, changing its name simply to Polaroid. And that's the Polaroid we have with us today. Polaroid has continued to announce cameras year after year. A few of these cameras are the Polaroid Snap, which was launched in 2015, and the Polaroid Snap Touch, which was announced in 2016. The Polaroid Snap and Snap Touch were compact, instant printing cameras that blend nostalgia of instant photography with modern digital features. And you can see that when you look at them. These cameras both featured in built-in print and you can see even Instax is integrating that design now into some of their cameras. And those printers used zinc or zero ink technology to produce two by three inch instant prints without the need for an additional ink cartridge. The Snap Touch also added a digital screen so you can preview those images instantly. And not to mention the ability to edit and save the photos digitally right there in the camera. Polaroid launched the Polaroid Pop in 2017. The Polaroid Pop is a digital camera that also combined the con the, the Polaroid Pop was also a digital camera that combined many of the same, that also tried to combine the convenience of digital photography with the instant gratification of printing as well. The camera featured a 20 megapixel sensor and a 3.97 inch touchscreen for composing and editing photos, just like the previous camera and many other modern Polaroid cameras. Polaroid also announced the One Step 2 and the One Step Plus. They announced the One Step Plus in 2018 and the One Step 2 in 2017. These cameras, although they featured many modern conveniences, these cameras actually did use film. The Polaroid Lab came out in 2019. This was another camera that was largely a digital camera that included many of those digital features. And Polaroid had a number of other cameras that continued to add features on into the future. But that brings us to 2023 and the announcement of the Polaroid i2. Polaroid has just announced a brand new ultra premium instant film camera and it looks really, really cool. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get my hands on the camera, but lots of folks in the film photography space have already been provided samples of these cameras to test out and shoot, and they look cool. And I'm gonna show you some photos and some videos of the camera here. The Polaroid touts the i2 as the first analog instant camera with built-in manual controls. 
but the camera also has automatic controls as well because that would suck if it didn't. You know, Polaroid basically made their name on the fact that the cameras are easy and simple to use. It'd be a shame to ax that now. One thing that they're quick to brag about is the lens on the i2. They say it's their sharpest ever Polaroid lens. The camera would also use Polaroid's proprietary i2 film. And if I'm being honest, the camera does look really great and I'd love to get my hands on it. Judging by how many videos that were produced by the film photography influencer community about this camera, it seems like Polaroid expects this camera to be quite a big seller. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens with Polaroid as a result of this. Is it gonna help move their business forward in any meaningful way. I don't know. Remains to be seen. Will this camera largely be a halo product for folks that have the cash to spend on their hobby, or will it be something that really advances their company? Polaroid's history has been much like the history of film photography. Unprecedented heights and desperate lows. But Polaroid has been resilient, and they've tried their darndest to innovate with new products and features while at the same time trying to maintain a connection to their unique history. It's this delicate marriage of technology and art that have always made the Polaroid company so special. Hopefully Polaroid continues to innovate and their cameras are with us for many, many years to come. Another company who's done a really good job innovating and always staying abreast of the latest technological developments and continuing to push the industry forward is Fujifilm. And I recently made a video about the history of Fujifilm. So if you thought this video was cool, before you go, why don't you check that video out? As always guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see ya.